I've just received my new multimeter recently in the mail from Electron, which is from a German company. Now it's a Bryman BM257S. And I went through a whole heap of data sheets and different multimeters that were out there. And basically I was looking for something comparable to the last one, last two that I've had, and that's the Fluke 116, which I've lost twice now. So one of the main criteria I was looking for when I was looking for a new meter is something that's good but not fluke expensive. So this was 97 euros, which um, including delivery um, was came out to about 200 Australian dollars. So that's quite reasonable considering my fluke would have been about $350. So it's cheaper but still quite a good multimeter. Now it looks quite sturdily made, it's a bit smaller than the Fluke. It is uh, the same rating, 600 volts at Cat3. It has a little stand on the back. It can have a volt. it can have a logger attached to it if you wanted to. I will probably never would need that. One of the other features that I was looking for in addition to the price is I wanted to have the low impedance mode, which this one has. And I also wanted to have the milliamps with my electronics projects. So that's got that function as well. It also has, and microamps, sorry. It also has milliamps and microvolts too, which are all, it's all very handy for me. Okay, so one of the other features that this multimeter has that some of the larger ones that were more for electronics didn't have was the electromotive field detector or no, non-contact voltage detector. So if you t I turn that on and hold that down, It puts it into this voltage mode. So if I put it near voltage, it shows up. That's something that's very handy that I would definitely make use of. And in addition to that, you can actually take the probe, just one probe, and you can attach it to an active wire. And it'll actually give a signal based on if it's an active or if you attach it to this, the neutral, it, it won't come up the same level so that's neutral and that's it's active so it helps you determine what wires are hot so that's another feature that I was looking for that this one had so basically that's the BM 257s and I'm pretty happy with it so far there are a few things that I don't like about it and that is the base is quite a bit it's small and the base is a bit rocky I've put it up on top of control boxes already in the last three days and it's done a drop test from 1.8 meters, unfortunately, but it did survive, so I guess that's good. It seemed to not be bothered by it, which is um, fortunate for me, but I don't particularly like it, how it's rocky like that and it's hard to balance on top of things, which is something that I obviously do quite a bit. Uh, the other thing that I found that it doesn't do is on diode mode, it only goes up to one volt, which means it won't test LED lights, I'm not sure what the fluke did but I've got a few other meters and I can use diode mode to test LEDs but this one it does not work with unless it's less than a volt which most LEDs are not. So that's the two downsides that I've discovered thus far. Uh, it comes with some leads here which are just they're pretty average sort of leads nothing too special about them. They are gold plated and they they're better than nasty but that's the leads that came with. It also comes with a thermocouple, a K-type thermocouple, this one is here, which I will be able to make use of when I'm doing refrigeration repairs. Now, more exciting than my new multimeter is actually these test leads that I got along with it. These are 25 euros from the same place and they're actually made in the in America, in the USA. I couldn't order them from the USA. They wouldn't ship them from, here, from there to Australia. So I actually ordered them from the same, from Germany and they shipped them, shipped them to me. So these are, Cat 3 at 1000 volts, and they these leads are simply amazing. I've been using them for a few days and they are the best things ever. If you're an electrician, I highly recommend getting a pair of these, they're, they're awesome. Basically, they sit in your hand perfectly. They always sit exactly how you want them to go. And they're quite short, the main part of it, and this part's quite flexible. The silicon cord is like nice and flexible and it's easy to untangle. Now, if you're doing one-handed probing like that, and you want to take a measurement, it's actually, I found this like amazingly easy to do compared to other uh, probes that I've had. And they just go exactly where you want them to go. So very easy to control. Despite the shape of them, they do look like they might not work very well, but they are, they are awesome. I really like them. They have the shrouds that come off, of course. 
and the screw and adapters. And I got it with a kit, so it came with three accessories. So it came with these little pincers, which screw on, and you can attach to things, which I will definitely make use of. And it came with these spade terminals, which I probably wouldn't use. They're a little bit too large for most terminals that I would work on. And they're, all the accessories are gold plated. And they are really sturdy and strong, these probes. But I've made, these are awesome. I've never actually owned a pair of clip-on um, accessories and I've been using them over the past few days and they're really, really handy and I'm happy to get these things here. So they're great as well. So that's the ProMaster um, 8, the Softy 8000, I think they're called. Softy Leads 8000. And I would highly recommend those if you wanted a nice set of probes, probe leads. So that is the um, meter and the leads that I have just got. Now I'll just do a quick rundown of what this multimeter does do. So first of all, the low impedance function that I was talking about, I'll to demonstrate that, I'll just put my leads into a PowerPoint just here. And we'll put it into low impedance mode. And we'll see here that in low impedance mode, we've got zero, it's, it's off and the PowerPoint is off. If you turn the PowerPoint on, PowerPoint's on. Turn it off. Now, it's often when you're measuring um, different control circuits or different bits of wiring, you, you sometimes get a random voltage. So if I put this to AC mode here, you'll see we've got four volts here and the PowerPoint's off. So you get things like this and sometimes it goes up much higher, like 30, vo 30 or 40 volts. And if you switch it to low impedance mode, it applies uh, 2,500 ohms of impedance, which is very low, and that makes it, it cuts it right out. So it shows off as off and on as on. So that's a pretty cool feature that I, I do make use of quite regularly. And it you have to make sure that you watch what circuits you work on because on a higher voltage, it's actually drawing quite a lot of milliamps and it can damage the circuit that you're working on or short something out. But um, most of the so you just have to be careful about where you actually do use that function. And it goes from 2,500 ohms up to about 350 kilo ohms in a short period of time. But you can use that on voltages up to 1,000 volts. Um, but bearing in mind that it, that will draw 560 milliamps on the initial start if you're using 1,000 volts for any particular reason. So it's just something to look out for. But that's the low impedance mode. And we've had a look at the um, voltage free mode. but We've got the regular AC voltage just here. So we can also change the range by selecting range here. So at the moment it's in auto. So we can actually change the scale if you wanted to. Go back to auto. You can also use the crest function. Now the crest function, this is what we're looking at here is true RMS. So um, if we press crest, it'll actually show you the peaks, a five millisecond peak. So that's the peak of the AC sine wave at 330 volts and the minimum which is minus 330 volts. So that's the crest function which measures at five millisecond into, into increments and I believe you can use that on DC and current as well. So we'll turn that off. And there's also the record function. So you can get it to record and it takes a recording every time it changes. And then you can go back and look at the minimum maximum. So if you press the record function again, now we're looking at the maximum that's been recorded, press it again, and you're looking at the minimum that's been recorded. And then you can go back to like showing both. So we can turn that off, the record function. And I believe that record function works with AC and DC voltage and current as well. Okay, so as well as voltage, it can also do Hertz. So if we switch it over to Hertz now, we just hold down this button here. And it'll show the line frequency, which is 50 kilohertz. No, sorry, 50 hertz here in Australia. Now it can go from 10 hertz to 10,000 hertz, which means you can't actually measure the power um, ripple coming out of here or anything like that because that's way too high a frequency. It could, it does do logic level hertz up to one megahertz. So at five volt, three volt levels, it would do that frequency. So for instance, it could measure. Uh, a pulse width modulation going into 
into a MOSFET or something like that and could measure the hertz going into that. Okay, I've relocated my camera up to the top of my cupboard and we're going to try out hertz on logic level output and I've got a Quinn LED board just here so I can try it on the gate of the MOSFET on this channel and we'll turn the light on Okay, we'll just go to the gate and that's a thousand, that's one kilohertz which is what I've probably got it set to in the software so that's pretty cool that works all right and I've got another channel there that's actually switching at 40 kilohertz That would, that works good too. Now, if you want to turn the light on, you can hold this and the light will come on for 32 seconds and then turn itself off. Now, one other thing I forgot to mention about this meter is that it runs on two AAA batteries. So that's quite small. So I'm not sure how long they will last for. That's probably one little downside, but that's one of the reasons why they've got this function. The light doesn't stay on for a long period of time. You can actually um, disable, um, it, the screen will turn off. If you don't touch anything, the screen will turn off in 32 minutes. And you can actually disable it so the screen won't turn off. And the beeping you can actually turn off as well temporarily if you wanted to. Now if we move to, oh, if we move to DC voltage, that's pretty straightforward. There's nothing too tricky about that. You've got auto function or you can set a range. Um, I've got a um, DC voltage source set up just here, so I'll just check it out. Twenty-four volts DC coming out of this driver here. I've got it connected to an LED down there. It's on blue. Now if I stick the probe on the blue output, we'll see it's at full power. If we put it onto the other ones, they're a bit lower because it's not. It's mainly showing blue on my LED strip down here. So that's DC power, very straightforward. Now we've got the mold, this function here, which is capacitance, diode, and resistance. So we'll start with the uh, this one here, and that works pretty good. Got no problem with that. Beeper function for continuity. If we press select, we'll go to the next mode, which is capacitance. And we'll just put our clips on. Now. now I've got a one microfarad capacitor just here. Now the, the range of this is 60 nanofarads to 3000 microfarads. And I've tried it with picofarads and it doesn't work, which is not surprising. So we've got one microfarad just there, which is correct for this capacitor. Now, if we put it onto a larger one, which is a thousand microfarads, it takes a little bit of time to get the measurement, but it gets it, no worries. So we've got the 930, 943 microfarads. Now, if you, uh, this, it remembers the mode you're in. So if you turn it off, and back on again, it will come to the one you're at last, which is a pretty handy feature. So if there's one that you use more than another, it will always stay on that one. So that's pretty cool. If we move it to the next one, which is diode, as I said, it goes up to one volt, any diode up to one volt. So we've got a shocky diode here. So we'll just clip that on. You can see that that looks like a shocky diode, 0.17 volts. Pretty straightforward, except no LED lamps. No LED chips or anything like that will work, be tested on this unless they're under a volt, which most aren't. Now we'll go to the next one and that's resistance. So I've got a 300 K ohm resistor just here. So it ought to range to 326 K ohm. Now you can use the relative function, which basically zeroes the meter temporarily. So it makes it zero. And then if we get a larger resistor, so we've got a three mega ohm here, and it will do it relative to the 300 K ohm resistor. So we can clip that on. 
So while that little symbol there, the difference is, it shows um, the difference between the two that we're measuring. Now if I get rid of the that, it goes up to what this resistor actually is. So that's another function. And you can use that, I believe, with the voltages as well and current, the relative function. So that's the resist ohms. So that's the four functions we've got there. Now this one here is we've got like we've got some millivolts, which you could use it to measure little sensors um, in gas heaters or flame sensors. Now we can also use this if we press the select, we can use we can measure temperature, which is pretty straightforward with the thermocouple that's been provided. Like so. We'll see that it is 28 degrees here. And that works absolutely no problem at all. And Fahrenheit as well. And then back to millivolts. So that is all straightforward. Now we've got some, we're up to amps. Now if we put the, our leads into the amp here, and we put it back to voltage, it'll give us an error so we don't blow our fuse, which is handy. We'll just go back to amps here. Now, one thing you've got to look out for is to, we've got that on DC at the moment. And like I said, this does remember the last setting. So you can select AC amps or DC amps. So we might do the DC amps first. We've got the LED lights connected up here. We'll just cut into the circuit. We'll measure the amps that we're drawing. So we've got the two modes. We've got the milliamps and microamps, which is fused at 0.6 amps. And this one here is at 10 amps. It's got a 10 amp H, HBC fuse. So we'll just clip this on to our source. Turn that on. So we've got that around the wrong way. We can fix that up. And you can see there that our LED strip just here is drawing nearly an amp, 0.9 of an amp in DC. So that's pretty straightforward. No problems there. So we'll just turn that off. Now what we'll do is we'll measure our AC current now. So we'll swap out our meter over using the select function to AC current. We've got it in 10 amps. So that's me measuring the mains voltage just there. We've got 0.16 of an amp in AC. So that's very straightforward. Of course we've cut into the neutral line just here rather than the hot line just to measure the AC voltage just there. So we'll turn that off so it's not on. And of course the last measurement that we've got here is microamps and it's given us the error because we haven't got it plugged into the right probe. And unfortunately I don't have anything going at the moment on microamps, but I'm sure that if you watch, uh, subscribe to some more videos, subscribe, you'll see some more videos and you'll see me using microamps in the future at some point in time. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, I'll, you might see updates on how this little model meter is um, panning out for me, uh, how good it is for my work and whatnot. I uh, hope it's been helpful. Give us a thumbs up if it has. And yeah, like I said, subscribe if you want to see more videos on electrical installations and home automation. I'll catch you next time. Bye.